record. I forgot to uh, record. So, like you say, you're going to need two pieces of uh, the heavy cardboard, uh, three and a quarter, or three and a quarter by four and a quarter. You'll need two of those. Two pieces of cloth or uh, tissue paper, whatever you're going to use for your book. And you'll need watercolor paper. I have, uh, you'll need two different sizes. This one is four inches by 12 inches. And you'll need another piece that is uh, four inches by nine inches. Um, now, if you have eight by, um, eight by 12, I think most of this uh, watercolor paper comes in nine by 12, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you'll just piece these together um, to get four pages. So, like I say, I have uh, a four by 12, and each one of these sections is divided by three inches. So three inches across, three inches across, three inches across. I do this on both sides, uh, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Then your other piece is uh, four by nine, and you're gonna section that uh, three inch sections. So you'll end up with two pieces of paper. So um, you'll need uh, glue. With this project, you can use a, a glue stick if you want. It's a little cleaner if you're using, uh, uh, you know, magazines uh, and that. It's a little easier to glue. I use the Mod Podge, and for this demo, I'm going to use Mod Podge. Um, and you're also going to need just ephemera. It can be a, a book, a magazine, whatever you have, whatever you want to uh, put in your uh, accordion book is fine. Um, also. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the tools. I didn't have those listed on uh, the sheet, but you're gonna need a brush. Uh, this is a, just a, a bristle brush. I think I find that works a little bit better. You don't want a soft sable brush. Uh, it just, it doesn't hold the, the glue very well. So I always like using a bristle brush and a fairly wide one. Uh, that way I can distribute the, the, uh, the glue a little easier on the paper. Gonna need some sort of cutting tool. Uh, I like using a bigger cutting tool when I'm cutting out uh, the the watercolor paper. It's a little easier to to hold this than it is to hold a little small cutter. So you'll need a pencil and um, bone folder works. Uh, if you don't have one, you could use the back of like a butter knife, something uh, just to score with, and. Of course, you're going to need your roller, and also um, I use just pieces of uh, computer paper or printer paper, and I use this to uh, cover my cutting mat. I forgot to mention also uh, in our first meeting with materials, this is kind of a handy thing to have. It's just a self-sealing cutting mat, uh, and it works well. It keeps me from cutting. Um, you know, through uh, cardboard or whatever. You can also use cardboard if you don't have one of these. That works, although the cardboard eventually just gets cut uh, if you keep using it over and over again. So, and that's basically it on the tools that you're gonna need. Of course, scissors uh, to cut your uh, imagery out uh, for your elements in your book. Uh, does anyone have a question? Um, if you do while I'm while I'm working, feel free just to jump right in and ask a question. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my my piece of uh, watercolor paper that I have here, and I've sectioned this into four sections. So what I can do oh, forgot to mention a ruler is handy to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score this. If you don't have if you don't have a bone folder, you can actually fold it up like this. But I think by using the bone folder, it just uh, it bends a lot easier. So find my other bone folder here. Um, you can find bone folders at Michaels. Um, they have them, and I'm just gonna just gonna press, and I'm just scoring this. And on the first fold, um, you're gonna fold it toward the middle or toward the, toward the sheet of watercolor paper. And also the bone folder works really well for 
creasing the edges. Um, so, and, and, I, and then I, I'm gonna do it again here. I'm gonna score it again here, but I'm just gonna go the opposite direction, just like, just like an accordion. Um, I, I think when I was a kid, uh, when I was in school, everyone made paper fans out of a sheet of paper, sort of the same way, sort of folding it, and you're gonna go in the opposite direction. So the first fold folds into the paper, and then the second fold folds back. And I like using the bone folder each time so I get a really nice um, crease. And finally, again, here, So your first sheet that's four inches by 12 inches is gonna look like this. So, and then I'll go to the second sheet. I'm gonna do the same thing. And score with my bone folder. I could just score this one as well uh, before folding it. Now on, on, this, on this piece, you're gonna fold the first page back and then fold this page over like that. So I have two pieces now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, the, the first um, cover or the first piece that I did that has four pages and I'm gonna I'm going to put this one behind this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on top. So I've got a piece of paper here and I'm just going to put glue all over the, the, the piece that says glue here. And another thing that I have as well is just a, a cup with water in it so I can put my brush in it so it doesn't dry. And I also have two pieces of paper towel. I have a dry one and I also have a wet one. This one, uh, using a wet paper towel is really good for wiping excess ink off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a fair good amount of ink. Now I only want it on this one page here. So I'm, I'm gonna be careful um, and, and put the glue right along the edge. Now, typically when you put glue on paper, it, it introduces sort of a, a moisture or water into the paper, so it has a tendency to curl. Uh, one thing about gluing, uh, you know, magazine elements or whatever, is if you wait a, a minute or so uh, for the, for the uh, glue to uh, bond into the paper, it will actually uncurl. So, So what I have, I have this lined up. You want to line it up where it matches. Then I'm just going to use my roller. And when, when I'm rolling, it may shift. So you want to just shift it back. With this heavy watercolor paper, it's not going to, it's not going to buckle that much because it's pretty heavy. And I'm using a fair amount of pressure as well on this. And at one point, um, it should hold enough. So now I have my pages of my accordion book. Um, you're really gonna have four pages uh, for your collage, where you'll actually have eight. Uh, page one, two, three, four. Then on the back side, you'll have also four uh, pages as well. Um, so now we have our accordion uh, watercolor paper made. I'll set that off to the side. Uh, I'm going to take one of my one of my pieces of cardboard here. That's going to be the cover. Um, you can be creative with your cover cover as well. Uh, it could be collaged elements. You could actually cut letters out of um, out of a, a book or magazine, and uh, you could use that as the title of your page. So be creative with your uh, covers. Um, don't just you know glue just one one uh, like I'm doing. Uh, be a little bit more creative. Um, think of, of different possibilities. When I'm spreading ink, I, I like to. I, you don't want to put a whole lot. 
Uh, you just want a nice even, even amount. Um, brush here. And um, this tissue paper is rather thin, so I don't really have to fold this in two. So I have a nice clean surface. And I just want to drop this on top. I could just, you could just push down with your hands on this as well. Um, I could actually put this on top as well. Now what you'll do um, after you put the front on is you're going to just put glue on the back. My brush fell into the container. And you want the paper, uh, your paper, whatever you're using, to be a little wider than um, wider than your cover. And I just fold that over. And you're not going to see the seams on this. Uh, it will be covered when we put it on the book. And of course, you're going to be a little neater and take your time. Um, more than me. You just want to make sure your edges are nice, nice and even. There's no, uh, nothing sticking out. Now I could just actually take other pieces of paper as well and glue them in different spots to create uh, shapes or whatever. So here's my first cover. Uh, let's make the next cover. And uh, if you need a little bit more glue, uh, you may be able to uh, just glue a little bit on the edges to make sure everything's folded over nice and neatly. And my second one. And with this tissue paper, if you're using that, you don't really need a lot of glue because the more glue you have, it will actually just soak into the, into the tissue paper. You can actually paint on the tissue paper as well. Um, that's what we're going to do on uh, a couple other projects. Um, I think it's project five, I believe. We're going to use uh, the tissue paper um, to overlap and create different colors. So I'm going to drop the blue. And that glue soaks through this tissue paper, so I can just put my other piece over this as well, and it will actually adhere to, to that. So you can press with your thumbs, your hands, that works well too. Um, and then once you get that done, just go around the inside again, um, a little bit of glue. And just fold the, fold the edges over. You could actually use cloth as well. Um, it would be more like a book cloth uh, that's on a book. This, um, the tracing, the tissue paper is fairly easy to work with. And you just want to fold up any of your edges here. Uh, that may take a little bit more glue. Now I would wait for this to dry um, a few minutes before I would adhere it to 
uh, my pages of my book. Just want to make sure as when the glue is still wet, uh, you can actually still press this, uh, use the roller. Um, now we have our two um, two covers going to use uh, the back side and the front. And what you're going to do is take your take your uh, accordion sheets that you made, and you're going to glue um, on the front here. So what I do is uh, I would glue the entire uh, first page here. Put a, a fairly uh, generous amount, but you want it to be really even. Uh, if it's thick in some uh, places and thin in others, it will actually ooze out the edges, and then some of the some of the pages, well, the page will not stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of center this, and you're going to have a slight overlap, and I put it in the dead center. Uh, you'll have about an eighth of an inch overlap, and then I'm going to use my roller again. You just keep rolling it until it's partially dry, uh, and then you don't have to worry about it curling up. So now I can fold this, and then I'm just going to take my other other sheet or other cover. I'm sorry, then I'm going to coat this side with glue. But uh, when you're doing this, just take your time, uh, measure everything um, precisely, um, and everything will fit perfect. And I want to make sure I'm getting the edges really nice too. Um, if you don't get the edges, then it will start to peel off. So I can close this now. And I, what I want to do is just line this up because my two pieces are the same size. So I can push them against the surface of my table. And then I'm just going to push down. And I can open this as well. And the glue's still a little wet, so. So there you, you have your, um, your accordion book with the covers on the front and the back. So uh, I typically leave um, this first page blank. You, you can put something on it, but I usually leave this blank and that gives me four pages to collage on. Um, you can do uh, your collaging, um, your idea, or your theme, uh, different ways. You could do it linear, which is page one, follows page two, sort of like a comic book. Uh, it could have a story, a narrative, or whatever. Uh, and that would be called linear. Uh, and then you could do the same thing on the back as well. Um, your your uh, book could be nonlinear, meaning that it doesn't really matter. One page doesn't follow another page but they're sort of random. Uh, I have seen some people uh, use this as an entire page. Uh, one thing that you want to consider too, you don't want to glue a lot of heavy stuff on this. Or it'll be really harder to fold up. Um, so think about that um, and do the front and the back. Uh, I have seen some people do uh, the opposites. So if you're doing say a color, you could do blue on one side and a complementary color on the other side. Um, so you could think about that, but do have a theme uh, for your book. Uh, on the project sheet, I listed some things that you could possibly uh, make your book about. Um, it, you could also, um, a few examples of what you could do is, uh, you could use things that you find during the day. Um, pieces of paper, um, Food uh, labels are kind of cool to use. Um, um, you could create, like I say, you could create a narrative. You can use text if you want. Um, so it's kind of open, except you do want to have a theme uh, that you base your book on. You also want to have a, a title for your book. 
uh, some of the themes that you could do. Uh, you could base your theme on home. Uh, what does home mean to you? Uh, you could pick uh, images, colors, or shapes that somehow conveys a sense of what home means to you. Um, is your home um, your street, your neighborhood, your city, your state? So there's a lot of categories of home, what home could be, not just a house. Uh, you could also translate your dreams. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, start. Um, you could do that if you keep a keep a uh, diary of your dreams. That would be something that you could refer to. Uh, desire would be another thing that you could uh, base your book on. Uh, you could create a collage around something that you desire. Uh, it can be abstract or specific. Uh, it could also be about uh, your desire to travel, a vacation, or uh, even an object that you desire. Uh, another thing would be a fortune cookie. You could base uh, the fortune uh, from a fortune cookie on your book. Um, you could also do something of past, present, and future. Uh, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, another uh, a nice thing you could do, since you have eight pages, you could do two pages of uh, summer, spring, winter, fall, the seasons, the four seasons. Uh, I've seen a few people do books about that, which is really interesting. Uh, the colors of the season. Um, just things that re would remind you of winter, spring, summer, or fall. What I do as you're gluing your pages, um, if you make one collage, um, you want to make sure you're flattening it out really, really well with the roller. But what I do is I fold it back up and then I put books on top of it. That, ha that will flatten it out. So as you start collaging, you notice that your book, and I try to keep, uh, elements away from the edge so um so there's there's nothing covering or folding over this edge it will just make it harder to, to fold up um, when you finish so even if i'm doing something throughout the entire um sections i just make sure that i cut it um, so it doesn't overlap over the edge um, that way your book will fold a lot easier so uh, one thing that I wanted to show also on uh, people had some difficulty uh, with the glue um, and the paper curling and everything. Um, I just have a small piece of uh, three by five piece of uh, watercolor paper that I have. And then I cut something out of um, a National Geographic magazine. Let me get another piece of paper here. And I always use, I always use one sheet of paper to glue on and the other sheet um, to put my substrate on and that way it doesn't get really messy uh, but what I want to do as you can see I'm, I'm putting it fairly even it's not thick at all uh, you want it really really even and you want to make sure that you cover um, the entire surface you can see it's really thin it doesn't take much um, and then I usually wait uh, a few minutes. This this paper is not too bad. It's not curling as bad. Some paper, uh, if it's a thinner magazine paper, it may curl. Uh, but what I'm going to do is, you can see it curl a little bit. I usually wait, you know, a minute or so until the uh, until the moisture and the glue is absorbed in the paper. But um, so I want to make sure this is on there for the flat, and I just keep rolling. And I roll in different directions. I do have another technique that uh, we can do in a later project as an option where we're using varnish, acrylic varnish, and we just paint that on the, the paper and let it dry. And then what you do is uh, you do that on the front and the back. And when that dries, you can lay the, the elements on top of one another and use an iron. And actually, uh, that varnish medium will actually melt, and they would adhere to the uh, to the other sheets. But I'm just making sure that I'm using the roller, and I'm pushing. You know, I'm using quite a bit of pressure. I always like to glue to the edge, and then I can just take my scissors um, and then trim up the back side on the back side here. 
I think I find that makes that little neater line. You can see it's it's really um, it's really flat. Um, and then if I wanted to add more elements, I would just do that each time in the element. Uh, a lot of times your paper may curl um, the substrate. If that happens, what I do uh, usually after the collage dries, uh, I will take a, a spray bottle with water and I just spray on the back side just a little bit. Then I put them between a sheet of paper and I just put a bunch of books or whatever I have that's really heavy on top. That will actually flatten uh, the collage out so it doesn't curl up because mo moisture in this will start to curl as well. But always use this roller. That's a really handy tool. It is for me um, and I use it uh, a lot. So um, any does anyone have any questions about what I went over? You can uh, feel free to email me as well. I'm always available. Uh, I, you can also call me on my cell phone. Sometimes that's a lot easier for me to talk than it is to try to type something if you have a question. Um, instead of having an email tag, you can just call me. I'm more, um, throughout the day I'm available most any time. So uh, if you do want to call, just send me an email to let me know so I can expect your call. Um, any any questions? No no questions. I haven't had a chance to look at everyone's work yet, so today I'm going to uh, leave a comment on um, on the discussions. So hopefully everyone was able to upload um, images to that. I, I noticed that there was some issues with uh, people not having space uh, on Canvas. So if, um, in your past classes, if you've been uploading images you may have ran out of space. Uh, if that hasn't happened yet, it might on uh, future projects. So what you can do is you can use uh, OneDrive, which is free. And uh, when you type reply, you'll see mid midway through um, the menu bar, you'll see a little V. You click on that V and then click on Microsoft 365. And that will allow you to share what you have on your um, your OneDrive, um, the image that you want to share. Now, what you could do also, uh, when you're taking photographs, if you haven't watched the, the video on uh, documenting your work, I would strongly recommend that because we can't really see your work uh, since we're not in the room together. So when you're photographing your work, you want to make sure that it's the best representation of your work. Always shoot from above. Um, with this project, you can also uh, do a movie as well. I've seen people do that. Uh, if you have an iPhone, you could actually turn the pages um, with your with your hand while you're holding um, your iPhone and your other hand. That makes a pretty good uh, presentation. Uh, and don't forget uh, when you're photographing your work, photograph the covers as well uh, and photograph them from different angles. You can set them up like that, photograph it uh, so it's becomes three-dimensional in a way. So I think that's all I have. Uh, does anyone have a question? And, and as soon as, uh, as, soon as um, I upload the video, I will share the link on a discussions page. So if you need to watch it again, um, I think maybe the harder thing might be how to fold these. So you can just rewatch that and uh, while you're while you're actually uh, folding the paper itself, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's book. Uh, should be uh, fun and exciting. Don't forget to pick a theme, and when you're uh, when you're talking about your work, talk about the content, your idea, why you chose the idea. Uh, you could maybe talk about difficulties, maybe that you had making the book, uh, things that went smoothly. Um, things like that. So I would expect to write about a paragraph about your book. Um, so no questions? No. Uh, I think that does it for me. So um, I appreciate everyone joining me. Uh, have a great day. You too. Bye.
Bye. Bye.